1974, the Rangers actually, uh, the part of the army that is like the Navy SEALs, and that they go in first, uh, even put it in their creed. I want to read this uh, to you this morning to just to explain the depth of the meaning of this concept, no man left behind. This is part of the, of the um, Ranger Creed. It says, energetically will I meet the enemies of my country. I shall defeat them on the field of battle, for I am better trained and will fight with all my might. Surrender is not a ranger word. I will never leave a fallen comrade to fall into the hands of the enemy, and under no circumstances will I ever embarrass my country. No man left behind. And as I was thinking about that, I thought that that also should be the battle cry of Christians. No man left behind. The idea that when we, when we think, when I was thinking about this whole thing this morning about um, Oklahoma, more Oklahoma, I've been there. I've been in that city. I've been in that area. Um, I've been in Dallas when we had tornadoes come through in Kansas when we had tornadoes come through. We've been in storm shelters. Terrifying, terrifying thing. That it would have been God's plan that every one of the people taken in that disaster would have known Him as their Lord and Savior. If you turn with me, please, to uh, Ephesians chapter 6 and read verses 13 through 18. Because the question is, how will we battle against sin and death? Ephesians 6, 13 says, Therefore take up the full armor of God, so that we will be able to resist in the evil day, and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, in addition to all things, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the spirit. And with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. So how are we going to handle this battle? This tells us exactly how we're going to handle it. God has prepared us to take on the battle of the world. Because we don't battle, the Bible says, we don't battle against, against the things of this world. We battle against power, the power of evil, Satan, in this world. And our battle is on two fronts. Our battle is to keep our own lives righteous before God. And we battle on this front for the lives of others, our friends, our loved ones, people on the street. We battle for their lives that they might not suffer an eternity separated from God. And we see different, different things in this section of scripture, but first of all, we see that we have a mandate in 6.13. Having made all of the necessary preparations, it says, put on the full armor of God. That's the way the believer would be ready to stand in defense of the gospel. 
Only if we have this armor that God talks about here. So we have the mandate and then we know the method. The method is to put on the armor of light. Be filled with the truth of God. Because light in the Bible refers to the truth of God. Romans 13, 12 says, The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. But this basically what Paul's trying to say here to the Roman church is the night is over with. We, we are beyond the darkness. We're beyond the evil. We know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. What we need to do is put on the light, the armor of light, so that we can spread the light throughout the nations. And then the other, the other thing under the method is to take on the whole armor of God. Prepare or equip yourself for battle. We need to be, we need to prepare, we need to pray, and then we need to proceed with the truth of God. <laughs> So we have the mandate and we have the method and then God also supplies us with the material. And in, in military terms, the material are the, the, the protections that you have to protect you against the enemy. And Paul lists uh, a bunch of protect, different protections here. In verse 14a he says, gird your waist with the truth. And what it's talking about here is, is the, actually the word girdle. And, and to the Romans, it meant a, a strong sash that was put around their waist and everything else in their armament attached to that girdle, this heavy girdle that was around their waist. So this provided the foundation for their protection. And then the second thing is the breastplate of righteousness, verse 14b. And what the breastplate did was protect them, all the vital organs. It was a shield that went from around their neck and their shoulders all the way down to below, uh, to below their waist and was attached to the sash. And it was either made of a, a really tight chain length or it was made of bronze or brass. Uh, depending on where they were in the unit. The, the men that were out in front, like our rangers or our seals that did, did the first attack, they had a very light armament so that they could move quickly. Whereas the troops behind that were the security for those, for those men, the, the archers and the people behind, they had a much heavier uh, uh, shield to protect them because of the incoming arrows. So we have that. We have the, the uh, truth as the as the undergarment or the foundation. <laughs> then we have the breastplate of righteousness, and then one that I thought was really interesting. It says in 15a, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And what this is referring to are the the Roman soldiers, even if you watch any of the old Roman movies and stuff like that, they were actually sandals. But they were sandals with a heavy tread underneath them for two reasons. First of all, that they could move quickly, faster than the other armies that had these big metal boots on and metal armament. But secondly, they were, they had the, the um, uh, almost like spikes, rubber uh, leather spikes underneath them that gave, gave them uh, an ability to stand against attack. So they not only could move quickly and in different directions, but they had a, a firm stand uh, that they could take. And our sandals are the gospel of peace. 
and then taking on the shield of faith, and this was really the ultimate protection. The shield was almost as tall as the man, and when the Romans were under severe attack uh, and moving towards an armed location, they actually could hook their shields together and it formed a solid wall of metal that protected them that they moved behind at an angle so that everything that would hit them, the arrows or, or, the, or the fiery darts and those kinds of things ricocheted off at an angle beyond where they were and protected them. In our shield, the most powerful weapon uh, in our armament is faith. Because our faith will overcome anything. And then the helmet of salvation. It was interesting that the, the armaments were all brought out by, by carriers, and they were the last thing that they handed the, the soldier before they went off into battle was their helmet. And God hands us that the helmet of salvation. He gives us the helmet of salvation. It's not something that we can take or grasp. It's something that is given to us. And then God has also provided us with, provided us with the munitions. It, it says in verse 17, the sword of the Spirit, and defines the sword of the Spirit as the Word of God. And this was a sharp two-edged sword that was very, very short. And again, it allowed uh, the Roman army to have an advantage in hand-to-hand -hand combat, whereas most of the, the troops they would battle against had these long, heavy swords. They had these short swords that were, were sharp on both edges and they could, they could move in both directions with the sword. In Hebrews 4.12, says that for the word of the Lord is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God is the most powerful weapon that we have in our, in our assault on the evil that, that's in the world. And then the second thing we have is it says praying always in verse 18. Tapping in to the power of the Holy Spirit, which gives us strength in the time of battle. Because the only way that we can resist temptation is through the power that we find in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit communicates with our spirit and gives us strength to overcome temptation. And it's the only thing that will get us past the fear of witnessing to other people. The power of the Holy Spirit working in us. And then lastly, we have the momentum. 18b, it says, being watchful to this end with all perseverance. We must look for every opportunity to minister and witness to other people. Every opportunity. God lays those opportunities out for us. And I've said before that we ought to be praying every day that God puts us in a position where we can minister to other people. You know, people look like they're happy, but they're not. You know, deep down inside, when they don't have the joy of the Lord, people are hurt. And I mentioned before about, about uh, when we were out to dinner, how we will ask the waitress, so we will tell her that we're about to pray for our meal and ask her, if, if, or a waiter, ask them if there's anything that we can pray about with them. And we just had, the other day, a young lady, I, I, she, I thought she was going to break down in tears. I mean, she was smiling and happy to ask her that question. Her whole demeanor changed. And she said she was going through an extremely difficult time in her family. And could we pray for her family? 
that everybody's fighting with everybody else. And I, I said, you know, there's an answer to that. And you can find that answer in Jesus Christ. And she didn't, it, it's difficult because you can't really take people off to the side when they're working. But I gave her my card and I said, give me a call if you want to know about how Jesus can change all of that in your life. I've listed some, some phrases there. Keeping, keep on, keeping on. And the no brings you closer to the next yes. And you are the only one that can decide how you feel. But the most important thing in that list is the last one. God is only as effective as your next witness. Your next time that you minister to somebody else. The God could have chosen a million different ways to reach people. He had that power and he had that ability. But he chose instead to do it through us. And we have that responsibility where God acts through us to other people. Not on his own. If you're hoping that you have a friend or a loved one that's going to accept Jesus and you're not telling them about it, it's not going to happen. Salvation does not happen by accident. Salvation comes through the word, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Any military strategist will tell you that you cannot win a war without ground troops. And God has set us up as his ground troops. And we need to advance on our knees. Use prayer and the power of the Holy Spirit to lead you to the next person that will accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. I thought about music, as you know, is one of my real loves. And this song came to me this morning just to last part of it. Lonely people do I see. Lonely people haunt my memory. We need to constantly be thinking about ways that we can minister to other people and show the love of God through you. So the thought for the week is that God wants you. And we hope that you will look at this poster and not see the humor in it as much as you see the importance in the message that God really wants you, every one of you, every one of us, to be out there ministering in a way that we will be able to share the gospel with other people. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for, again, for those here and those all over the world that have in the past and are currently serving our country and keeping us free and providing for us, Lord. We just praise and thank you for them. We ask now that you would be with us and that you would convict us to search for opportunities to minister yet this week and in this day and this week especially to our friends and loved ones. Lord, give us an opportunity. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus, you've never made a personal commitment to him, we would ask you to uh, come forward and make that commitment. Uh, if you desire to, to um, uh, join the church, we would ask you to uh, forward and make that known or desire to identify with Christ through baptism, we would, we would also encourage you to come forward as Todd uh, leads us in a, in a song. Let's stand.